Hello everyone, Tomasz from Poland here, younger brother of Bart. Probably know Bart more than me, so that's always how I introduce myself. I would like to inform you about uh, our little project that we are planning on doing here. Probably in a couple of parts uh, where everything is motivated by the recent events surrounding the pre-existence of Christ, uh, the debate, and all the comments surrounding the, surround the kids. So in the first part, part uh, we would like to, it will be Liam, Bart's and mine video concerning the, not the, not the topic, but as the disposition of what is happening surrounding the, the, the topic. Uh, second part is where uh, we'll make a group talk commentating the events with addition of Peter May and Normal Norman uh, about uh, in depth in depth talk about what is happening because a lot of channels and people are uh, giving some statements uh, let's call it even rebuking, rebuking other brothers so we won't do it the same but we'll just comment and give our thoughts and what we feel about the current situation thirdly uh, i encourage other people i hope we um, will motivate other people to actually share the, their thoughts and feelings about the topic i know that some people are heavily influenced by it and uh, don't know what to think about it so we hope just to uh, shed some light on 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 the situation just so people feel less stressed uh, less stress less stressed in the entire topic additionally i would like to inform you that we have a discord group uh, where we socialize uh, with other fellow members of the body of christ so if and it is made by me uh, i think i well thought it we have a lot, a lot of different channels so if you're willing to join let's even have a casual talk and fellowship with others so i encourage you to contact me liam or other uh, members like peter or norman that are on the channels we have a uh, many 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 people so we have even automated bot that we have automated notification with different youtube channels different uh, articles so we will never miss some information so we talk about uh, economic politics there there's a lot of heated discussions so it's really really nice uh, if you're obviously willing to join there and yeah and uh, lastly again i encourage everyone i hope like this this project this message will maybe encourage other 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 members to speak up about what is happening and how they feel about the recent events grace and peace everyone Hello everyone. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Christ Jesus. I hope you're having a blessed day wherever you are on this big beautiful earth. I want to say that I love you all with all the love I'm capable of giving. You all mean so much to me. I'm so grateful for our Father for leading me to you guys. Throughout all my experiences, good or bad, I wouldn't change a single thing. There are too many names to name, of course, but you know who you are. So there's been a lot of arguing and bickering and accusations thrown around and toxicity surrounding the body for over a month now. Of course I'm referring to the pre-existence debates. I've learned a lot from watching you all interact with one another. I've also learned a lot about myself too. This all came about from an idea that God placed into my head and I feel somewhat responsible for all the drama. Of course I know ultimately God planned all of this but I still see all the divisions, all the hatred and pain I may have brought up. It hurts me to see you all fighting like this. This was not my intention to cause all of this. I wanted nothing more than to have a conversation and then hopefully remove the tension between the two sides. I see it's resulted in the complete opposite. However, I have to be fair and honest with myself. I'm not fully to blame for this. Everyone has had a hand in fanning the flames. And ultimately, God is the one who is responsible, not me. With that being said, I now realize that my idea has been a cause for disunity in the body. And for the hand that I've used to partially make this mess, I'd like to apologize for this. Especially to those who have been hurt by all of this, on both sides. I'm all for debates and discussions, but not if they cause fights between us. Peace in the body is important. If you wish to do, debate this with your brother or sister, I think we should do so in private, at least for now. I know many of you said many harmful things to each other, 
It's like watching a man that's self-mutilating himself. And that's going to take time to heal. A slave of the Lord must not be fighting, but be gentle toward all, apt to teach, bearing with evil. I'm still undecided on the whole pre-existence of Christ thing. Whether he did pre-exist or he didn't pre-exist, I don't know. I'm going to study this in private, and whatever conclusion God reveals to me, I will not be telling you. <laughs> the shared love that we have for each other is the skeletal structure, the veins, the foundation of the body. Yet it's not our love that binds us, it's God's love. It's this love that our Father will use to draw all things back to himself through the risen Christ. When the head and body will unite, they both shall be completed to make the complete Christ. This is what we've all been longing for. The tie of maturity is love, and in all honesty, I don't think any of us are fully mature. None fully comprehend, none fully understand God's agape love, none except Christ Jesus himself. We are all as little children, small and fragile, insecure and easily offended. I see us all as in our, fa as in our father's house, while our brother is away. While he is absent, we form groups, start arguments, bicker and fight amongst ourselves. We accuse, condemn, separate ourselves from our brothers and sisters. All of this tension, discourse and fighting can be resolved, but only if we come together, lay down our weapons and embrace each other as a family. Deep down, we are all broken individuals. Children trying to understand the infinite. Many of us suffer from trauma that was brought upon from our childhood. Many of us suffer from addiction. Many of us suffer from illnesses, both physical and mental. Many of us are old, withered and tired. Many of us are young, confused and angry at this evil, evil world. We are all scared. We are all arrogant. We are all lonely. We are all tired. We are all prideful. We are all hypocritical. We are all boastful and ignorant. Let's be patient then. Let's have empathy for one another. We are all in the same lifeboat, drifting further and further away from this sinking ship of a world. Let's not drift apart from one another though. Has our mutual affection for one another faded into darkness? Whatever happened to deeming one another superior to oneself? You shall love your associate as yourself. God is love and above all else be pursuing love. We are luminaries in a world crooked and perverse, twisted and wicked. The entire world is against us, and few understand us. Many have rejected us, including our own family members and our friends. But what we have lost, we will be granted back sevenfold in return. God gave us a new family, and he is creating it as I speak. I see every member as a hidden treasure, once unearthed and opened, we find a treasure worth more than all the gold in the world. That treasure is a piece of Christ's heart, blinded so we couldn't see it. This piece has been given to us. It's a gift that completes us as well as him. And Christ's heart is God's heart. We are one in him, one body, one soul, one mind, one spirit. With all humility and meekness, with patience, let's bear with one another in love. Enduring to keep the unity of the Spirit with the tie of peace. We have the same expectation, the same calling. We long to be snatched away to meet our Lord in the air. We are one and the same, cut from the same cloth. We are one in Him. Stand ready to embrace your brother with your arms open. Greet them with a holy kiss. Some will kiss you back and others will greet you with a stab to the heart. Embrace them both. Don't render evil for evil, but overcome evil with good. If we should have a complaint against one another, bring it up with our Father. We are all so different and unique. We come from many nations. We speak many languages. We've all suffered in this world. Let's be honest with others and ourselves. Let's love our brethren, even if we don't always like them. We wouldn't truly be brought brothers and sisters if we didn't fight. Our flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. How can I reject you? You are a part of him, and therefore you are a part of me. If I reject you, I reject myself. All the body members are necessary and serve for their own unique purpose. 
How can the eye say to the ear, I have no need of you? Is the body deaf? And how can the ear say to the eye, I have no need of you? Is the body blind? All are essential and all are needed. The potter will mould the clay into whatever he likes. Who am I to judge what he does with his possession? All of us are being moulded by him for his purpose. Each in God's own appointed time will come to the full realisation of the truth. We all know this, yet we are still frustrated by those who do not yet see. We must have patience. God uses the obnoxious to teach us patience. All is out of God, and all will return to God. Everything has its purpose. The love of Christ transcends knowledge. It's transcendently transcendent, which means it cannot be expressed in words. Even if you tried, the fleshly mind cannot fully understand it. It's not possible for us in this current state to fully comprehend the love of Christ, which is the love of God. Although we have many differences, we are united in him despite our constant bickering and arguing. All of us are truly morons. I often wonder what the celestials see of us, especially when we fight amongst ourselves like this. Oh, the multifarious wisdom of God. We are truly morons united. Love, grace and peace to you all. Hello, hello fellow members of the body of Christ. It's Bart from Poland here. Um, I wanted to give my two cents about the um, tough situation that we as fellow brothers and sisters are now. Um, and I hope, uh, as always, that uh, God will use it for his glory and uh, be because we all know that he's working all together for good uh, especially for good of us uh, whom he has chosen before the disruption of the, of the world to be conformed to the image of his son so members of the body of christ <clears throat> guys um we um have the best message that I think anybody could dream of. We have been given the realization that the Son of God, Son of Mankind, Jesus Christ, our beloved Lord, died for all, died for sin. He ceased to exist. Uh, he was entombed. He had his funeral. He was then roused after three days. So he was roused the third day according to the scriptures so that God confirmed that what our Lord did on the cross has been finished so the reconciliation is of the whole universe is guaranteed and we are the spearhead of this operation and this is purely because of God's delight he wanted uh, us he loved us first not us we are like Martin says, uh, Savior, Father. So I think this is uh, the most important thing that we should keep in mind uh, during any argument or discussion that we have that we have been given this realization by the grace and by by the vast love of, due to vast love of God to us, you know. He has tailored made us <clears throat> for for himself we are chosen to be for the Lord of his glory so uh, he works in us for the sake of the delight of his will for his namesake so this is all his operation from A to Z <clears throat> we are only here to experience it so even the worst situations that we are in uh, work for our benefit uh, even though we don't see it right now or we don't realize it sometimes maybe and uh, it may seem like a total disaster and chaos to those outside but God knows what he's doing so praise be to God always I wanted to touch upon <coughs> the conduct that our uh, Apostle has and had uh, well had during the worst time so what we read in Second Timothy, <clears throat> even uh, during his uh, Paul's uh, first defense, when he said that 
uh, at my first defense no one came along with me but all forsook me which is from chapter 4 of 2nd Timothy uh, verse 16 in, in uh, verse 17 Paul said may it not be reckoned against them so he conducted himself in a way in which he also uh, heralded so always having this one goal pursuing love he we can read um, it in Corinthians that uh, love is never lapsing and that uh, just a second uh, love builds up despite knowledge puffing up and Paul always had this in mind you know the good of others especially the weak in faith and uh, he also said that uh, love we should be pursuing because uh, when our faith will be no longer uh, will be realized in that we will observe Jesus Christ himself so and our expectation will be realized so we will be snatched away uh, love will always be there you know uh, the greatest of these is love and this uh, has to do with our conduct uh, towards each other to deem one another superior to oneself to have the same disposition that Christ had to, towards others he he became a servant uh, not 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 to lord over others even though he had this uh, high position yet he abased himself to serve others even him uh, the son uh, the son of god we also read that <clears throat> love uh, it's not only self-seeking uh, but it's not not incensed it's not taking account of evil so we are god is maturing us uh, in love teaching us patience and kindness toward each other even in the toughest of situations and <clears throat> what also strikes me is that paul always always uh, wanted us to uh, focus uh, and have uh, focus on christ have this singleness of heart toward our lord because if we are boasting we should be boasting only in our lord and and uh, his sacrifice on the cross because it that it, it's well the the whole revelation of, of 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 god is about him and his beloved son and christ jesus always wanted to point to the father so i think we by focusing on christ will uh, more will be more of a luminaries to those outside because there's really so much evil in the world and i think that uh, this is one of the most important things we should be focused on as for <clears throat> exposure rebuke we can also read in second timothy in chapter 4 verse 4 uh, when Paul admonishes uh, Timothy to herald the word, stand by it opportunely, inopportunely, we are still talking about the evangel, the evangel, the, 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 uh, that Christ died for our sins, was then entombed, and was roused the third day by God, according to the scriptures. Stand by it opportunely, inopportunely, expose, rebuke, and treat with all patience and teaching, with all patience. We are talking about. Uh, the labor of love this is tough that's why i really don't understand some who make fun of those who are trying to maintain the unity of the spirit because it takes a lot of effort and a lot of sacrifice uh adding to the everyday problems that we have as human beings we have families we have jobs we try to endure it each day to wait for our lord out of the heavens so uh, the patience we are being taught by God through this through that which, which we suffer um, is hard it's tough work it's not easy it's not kumbaya a unity we are talking about deeming one another superior to ourselves oneself even those who are antagonizing uh, who are our brothers and sisters who may whether they are right or wrong they they are not they they they, they weren't given the patience to deal with our uh stubbornness uh, to some topics or or 
whatever or our uh, brokenness you know it's it's really t tough work <clears throat> uh, that's why Paul um, talks about the labor of love the labor this is a labor this is a tough labor and also uh, I sometimes uh, do not understand uh, why some people use some sort of a scare tactics like using the Diaz of Christ uh, to scare people into believing a particular uh, doctrine you know um, we know that uh, Paul said in the first Corinthians I think it's chapter away the second and I'm back sorry for this inconvenience uh, so I was wrong this is chapter 4 in uh, first Corinthians um, Paul starting from verse verse 3 Paul is speaking about um, examining or being examined now to me it is the least trifle that I may may be examined by you or by man's day but n neither am I examining myself for of nothing am I conscious as to myself but not by this am I justified this is not about um, our works now he who is examining uh, me is the Lord so that be not judging anything before the season till the Lord should be coming who is who will also illuminate the hidden things of darkness and manifest the counsels of the hearts and then applause will be coming for, to each from one from God so in essence uh, we are talking about uh, the counsels of the hearts the disposition and then applause will be coming to each one from God despite our brokenness because all of us are broken we have thorns in the flesh we have um, we sin we are imperfect we are being perfected by God and we are God's workmanship we are his achievement so if the applause would wouldn't come uh, would not come to, a, to to even a one single person it would speak uh, volumes about God and it would make him a sinner because if we are God's achievement then how can uh, anyone not get uh, applause from God <laughs> you, you are his ma works, 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 worksmanship you're, you're his masterpieces this is really humbling uh, because we when we look in the mirror we don't see it and I think that um, our flesh gets the best of us when we confront each other and forget about that God is not finished with us yet we should always have this in mind you know um, going to the other thing um, about the cal cal uh, calumniators or those who calumniate uh, in um, first Timothy uh, chapter 1 um, Paul is speaking to Timothy starting from verse 18 this charge am I committing to you child Timothy according to the preceding prophecies over you that in them you may be warring the ideal warfare we are warring against the spiritual forces we are not warring against fl bl flesh and blood we are we are not to fight each other we are warring Satan and his minions which uh, those beings uh, those beings have impact on our mindset this is basically in mind warfare having faith and good conscience uh, verse 19 having faith and good conscience with some thrusting away have made shipwrecked as to the faith of whom are Hymenus and Alexander whom I give up to Satan that they may be trained not to calumniate so calumniate I think is means to speak evil of uh, let, uh, let me check first Timothy uh, 1 uh, yeah this is this spe speak evil of to calumniate so we are not to do this uh, against each other uh, this is not walking in love what more what's more than there to add I think you know this is I, we are just speaking about conduct you know um, we are we also know that of course um, 
we are imperfect and we should uh, have some you know this is not take it too personally however it's sometimes the arguments that just get out of control and of course this is all of God but it will work for the good what I'm trying to say is the labor of love is not easy and that to be to have mercy on those who are antagonizing also we, we read in chapter 4 in Ephesians no you did not thus learn Christ Christ <clears throat> since surely him you hear and by him were taught according as the truth is in Jesus so we are taught by Christ to put off from you as regards your former behavior the old humanity which is corrupted in accord with its seductive desires yet to re re to be rejuvenated in the spirit of your mind so this is what i was talking about mind, war mind warfare the man within is being renewed day by day but the outer man is decaying and we are to put the old humanity which has been crucified you know uh, with our lord so and leave our put off our former behavior and to put on the new humanity which in accord with god is being created in righteousness and benignity 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 of the truth not for forcefulness we are talking about benignity wherefore putting off the false let each be speaking the truth with his associate for we are members of one another we cannot reject other members we are one body we are we are our head christ keep us all together and then uh, verse 26 in chapter 4 ephesians are you indignant and not sinning a rhetorical question we are broken we cannot do it we get easily angered and lose our train of thoughts stop thinking clearly and just give into our emotions you know to, to, to our flesh do not let the sun be sinking on your vexation not yet be giving place to the adversary and this is where the adversary is thriving when we lose our temper so this is why I'm speaking to you dear brothers and sisters because we easily lose temper and this is just part of our brokenness just have mercy and be kind to one another God is working in you this, those are fruits of his spirit not ours we are his achievement never forget this <clears throat> also <clears throat> uh, in Romans chapter 14 there's uh, from uh, verse 9 to 12 for for this Christ died and lives that he should be the Lord of the dead as well as of the living now why are you judging your brother or why are you also scorning your brother of course the whole context is about eating and drinking however reading further for all of us shall be presented at the deus of god for it is written living am i the lord is saying for to me shall bow every knee and every tongue shall be acclaiming god consequently then each of us shall be giving out concerning himself to god so we we all we shall all be giving account concerning ourselves to god and god will be applauding us despite our the, all our bad stuff will be burned up we will be perfected then not now we we don't have all knowledge we don't have perfect love uh, and this is also corroborated in in verse 13 why we should have mercy and uh, be kind to one another by no means then should we still be judging one another but rather decide this not to place a stumbling block for a brother or a snare okay then then it uh, goes on to say not to, about the food and drink however the <clears throat> the point is not to be a stumbling block for a brother or a snare so basically it's about our conduct towards each other pursuing love the labor of love this is tough this is tough walk i'm not saying that it's easy i really find it hard too uh, then in Philippians also about the conduct <clears throat> if there then chapter 2 uh, verse 1 if then there is any consolation in Christ if any comfort of love if any communion of spirit if any compassion and pity fill my joy full 
that you might be mutually disposed, having mutual love, joined in soul, being disposed to one thing, nothing according with faction, nor yet according with vainglory. What is vainglory? Let us check. Uh, Philippians 2 1. Vainglory. Uh, empty esteem. Kenodoxian. So, not in accord with empty esteem. We are not doing it to pleasure ourselves or our egos. Continuing. But with humility. Deeming one another superior to oneself, it's a blow to our egos, to the old man, which is reading the old man who has been crucified with Christ. Is re it's the, the corpse is reading its ugly head, our flesh, you know, and trying to pump us up during our discussions, but we shouldn't do it. But with humility, deeming one another superior to oneself, this is a labor of love. Not each noting that which is his own, but each that of others also. So this is all, again, talking about conduct. There's nothing wrong in discussing things or even in strongly defend, defending a teaching. But it's all about conduct. We shouldn't lack em empathy like Liam was talking about because we are one body. We have one head one expectation, one calling. And I think that this is all, there, there is much more that I can talk about. It's really, truly, uh, truly hard for me <laughs> to talk to the camera. I'm really shy and as you can tell, I, I'm a little bit stressed, but don't worry. God is conciliated to the world. We are his ambassadors of peace. We are not supposed to be fighting with each other. We are supposed to be admonishing each other, upbuilding. Not to condone error or whatever, but when doing it publicly, we also have to have in mind how we are looked upon by those from the outside. Because basically to like to 80s agnostics, we, are, we still look like a another Christian sect, but we are of course not. We are... Uh, we are members of the body of Christ, we are against uh, organized religion, especially Christianity, which denies the evangel of the uncircumcision, also even, uh, some may venture to say to the, the circumcision, but basically uh, we shouldn't be fighting each other because then we will only uh, well, I don't know how to say it, but maybe not, not debilitate, but or stop, but hinder, hinder the heralding of the pure evangel, the evangel of the sin, our sin composition committed committed to Paul. And I think that we should have this in mind. We can discuss even heatedly some things privately, and if we do it in public, we should always have the labor of love in mind and to pursue love above everything else and have a mercy, mercy towards uh, other brothers who are uh, of a different opinion, who may be antagonizing. Remember that even, even the weakest member of the body of Christ is so precious uh, to God and to our Lord that our Lord gave himself up for that person. This is pure, unadulterated agape love. Never forget that uh, love from above as always hope that at least maybe i i help to i help with this message and uh, laugh from above again <laughs> thank you thank you for your time hello everyone um, this is Tomasz from poland brother younger brother of bart fellow member of the body of christ i think because there are a lot of things happening recently that are disturbing, just to say the least. 
and I would like just to share my thoughts, not talk scriptures, just reason my my point of view from my reasoning point. And uh, I will say that it all started from the debates about the preexistence of Christ. But what worried me was how people reacted about about this topic but before i elaborated on it i would like to say that i never had a chance to truly fellowship with with fellow members members of the body of christ and i am a member since 2012 or 11 around this time i think and my entire experience was just by watching youtube videos of people like martin zender clyde pilkington and just to name the least and a couple of months ago i actually thought about making a social group a discord a discord group because i thought like hey why i don't hear anything about it i saw my brother finally reaching out to fellow believers and joining them on some skype calls or whatever group calls and i thought like i have the knowledge to make something better in my view uh, with the experience in discord and it was and also what helped me do it was your analogy or small i don't know how to say it but small talks martin you know like if you build it they will come right like in that movie fields of glory or i know how it's called but i have to say that recent months were so growing getting to know the body the people something that I truly didn't know, didn't have any experience of. And I just saw how much each of us differ in that body, how big of a spectrum of people we have. We have people from so many countries, from different social positions, with mental illness, with some uh, uh, mortal illness if i can call it like this and just so many different characters genders uh, it's insane and the lesson i took from it is that we all bring something else to the table and i feel like each of us brings the experience, the thoughts about faith, God, scriptures. As, and it feels like none of us has a hundred percent truth, but it's our attitude that helps us grow. And I think a lot of people that were on a Discord group, because we had a lot of heated discussions i think we all learned patience and to respect each other that maybe we don't know everything and for me personally that was really educational and from that point i would actually move to the topic of the pre-existence of christ and what is happening with it and it feels like you martin or other people i don't know why you think you are the correct side in here like why am i being called a blasphemy if i think differently you know if i use my reason and your argument I can say the same thing about you. And now who's right? I know that this argument is stupid, 
because it's not about you or me, but it's about the truth. But none of, none of us knows the truth a hundred percent. I mean, look at your own life. I look at my own life. Did how did I get all this knowledge? You know, like there are people that forget where the faith comes from. Before they got faith, they were reading Bible from A to Z multiple times, and they didn't get the truth. So even when they have the truth, do they think they will they will know more with this filter now? It's still God that reveals the truths. And none of us knows if th this is the correct side. We all learn from each other. And in order to learn from each other, we need to show love, patience, be open-minded, be self-critical to each other. To, I mean, to each other, to ourselves. Like, I always take example and how I, how I was growing in faith. I'm sorry, I'm really stressed because it's hard to say those things for me it's it's not easy you see it's not easy for me to go and bash people because it's not who i am all i want is just peace and love i don't want to see people bashing me and coming back to the growth i grew with my brother and we grew because together we're just taking from all the lessons and we're just arguing about it, talking about it. It's not like we just saw one thing and yeah, that's it. We always think, we always think, be critical, be critical, be critical. We know nothing. It's only God that reveals truths to us. And why do we have statements like Europe, really? You know, like saying that someone is a teacher? Someone is a model pole. It's self-appointment. Who made who here? I don't see any scripture saying that someone is a model pole. I can say that I am. And what you're going to do about it? You're going to say that, well, I don't post enough videos. I don't read enough scriptures. Well, who made you the judge here? Think about it. How can you say such things? And yeah, there are people that can listen, can read, and maybe there are not many wise people. I mean, there, there are not many wise, but there are wise people in the body of Christ. And they will he held, held you accountable for what you say. And this is outrageous because all of the arguments that you use against someone, I can use against you. But what's the point? Who's right now? Didn't you people read Romans? Not to judge the other guy? I never do it. I I had experience in on Discord where at the first glance, like even when I saw a red flag from someone's statement, like, yeah, I gonna I know, like, counter it, but then again, like, why? The truth will always defend itself. I don't need to add anything to the truth. If there is a lesson from all that is happening right now, is that it's still God who makes me believe or not. No one has to add anything to it. And this is why I really love the old teachings that we have. Like the early days of you, Martin. You know, the first movie I saw that changed my life was Free Will Kills. And you didn't add anything to that video. You just gave verses. And that's it. I got it. I just got it. You know, you didn't have to add anything. And this is what we should do with, about truth. Just leave it there. If someone is going to believe it, they will believe it. I always give as a prime example what Aaron Welsh is doing. Because in my opinion, hands down, he's the most mature 
person, and I won't call him a teacher, he's a person that share his thoughts about what he finds in scriptures because that's what you are doing, people. You are sharing your thoughts and ideas. And whenever he presents a topic, there's a hypothesis, but there are arguments for and against, of course, with his conclusion. But he doesn't force my mind. It's still open for me to interpret it and just dig into the topic and make up my own mind. And is it anything bad if I agree with him or not? Well, I either agree, and if I disagree, should I bash him? It doesn't change my fundamentals. We all believe the same thing. What is the criteria to be a member of the body of Christ, believing in us in the death of Jesus Christ, his sacrifice? He sacrificed his entombment. I feel like people forget about fundamentals so much. Like, where's love here? Where's patience? There are people talking about crusades in the comments against their own brothers and sisters? Why? Why is it happening? What's the reason for that? It same goes to you, Clyde. Like, your example is worse than this, because here we just face people maybe not being mature enough, but it doesn't change our expectation. But I only, if you're all gonna listen to this, I just have one question. I saw a statement from you like, everyone will die just as the head of the body. Why, why, why do you want to take away my expectation? I don't want to face death. I don't want to experience death. And snatching away is the only thing that keeps me motivated that I won't have to experience this. So the question is like, what are you trying to achieve? If I, because I'm strong enough to believe differently, but there are people that are not. So tell me, if I will die, why should I live? I would say grace and peace to everyone. But honestly, what does it matter anyway? People make up their mind. We're like, I feel like we're right now like those group of children in a class with all of the chaos happening. And we're just awaiting for the teacher to come in and just settle us down, just to unite us. But before the head comes, why can't we at least sit down in peace, respecting each other? Bye.